This is the second in our series on the voice of God and we have been looking at the different ways that God speaks and talking about those things that I believe are essential to what God is doing with us and in us. It's important that we recognize this. It's important that God's people today learn to hear his voice. We talked about the uh, first principles of the oracles of God being the milk of the, uh, not the milk of the word, not the milk of the logos, but the milk of hearing God's voice, the milk of the rhema. And the, when we look at a child, uh, the beginning, in the beginning of their life, the first thing they know, learn to recognize is mother's voice. And the milk of the word would be a bit, or not the milk, the milk uh, that God of the first principles of the oracles of God would be the milk of the rhema, hearing, recognizing, and knowing God's voice. From that comes this series uh, that God gave us some years ago. So we want to continue with this and see where God would take us. It is uh, very important that we recognize this. Hearing God's voice brings immunity to disease. In Exodus 15 and 26, he said, I'll put none of these diseases upon you. And they were, it brought dement, the, the dimensions were brought into by hearing the voice, were brought into a peculiar people, were brought into a nation of kings and priests, a holy nation, the royal people, and a chosen generation. These are things that hearing the voice of God brings us into. Let's look in these passages of Scripture. Uh, the Bible is very clear. Where there is no vision, the people perish. That's from the book of Proverbs, and it's very clear. But some of the other translations help us grasp the fullness of this. It says in the Godspeed translation, where no, there is no vision, the people break loose. In other words, vision is able to restrain us. It brings a restraint. It brings a discipline into our lives. Uh, in Moffat translation says, people, people break loose without a guiding hand. Hmm, very interesting, isn't it? Uh, the Amplified Version puts it this way, where there is no vision, no redemptive revelations of God, the people perish. In other words, God's people must have a vision of him as a redeemer. And if you're in a situation where you cannot see how God can redeem it or redeem you in it, there's a sense of despair, of discouragement, of depression. Hosea 4 and 6 says, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Often in the scripture, knowledge is experiential, and it's the experiential knowledge of God, nothing less than that, but it's the experiential knowledge of God that it speaks about. Therefore the people that doth not understand shall fall. Powerful, powerful, powerful isn't it? Let's look for a moment Let's just look at this for a moment where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Can I give you a different understanding of the law? Um, 
in the New Testament, this would speak to what is talked about in Romans. The law of the spirit of life or living in Christ Jesus sets me free from the law of sin and death. The law of sin and death is in James. But the law of the spirit of life or living in Christ Jesus, that is a relationship living, not an academic or a doctrinal uh, place or position. And that's very important for us to catch. Now we're going to look at some principles of the voice. Principles of the voice of God, which hopefully will help us um, understand what God is doing here. Okay? The Bible says in Genesis 3 and 8 that God came and walked with Adam and Eve in the cool of the day. God wants you when you're most alert. Now, it's interesting that Israel, as a nation, never heard God's voice till Sinai. Hmm. At Sinai, which, by the way, is analogous to the day of Pentecost, because they came to Sinai in the first day of the third month, which is Pentecost. Okay? God spoke to them from off the mercy seat. Just let me say this, that, that when it is God speaking, there is, it is always pregnant with mercy. He was above the mercy seat. Under the mercy seat was the law, the Ten Commandments. Under the mercy seat was the budding rod of Aaron, which represents authority and rulership and leadership. Under the budding or under the mercy seat was the pot of manna, which speaks of revelation. All of those things must be kept under the mercy of God. And then in Deuteronomy four thirty one to thirty three it said God spoke out of the midst of the fire. Therefore, when I'm going through fire, I need to hear the voice of God and not focus on the fire. And then in Deuteronomy 5 and 22, it said, God spoke out of the thick darkness. When I'm going through darkness, thick darkness, there is an ability to hear the voice of God. I need to ask God to help me hear his voice in the midst of those types of struggles. Oh, I wish we could hear that. We have cursed the darkness. We used to sing an old song in, uh, when I lived in Christian community. The night is all... The, <clears throat> let, me, let me try this again. Uh, the sun is always shining it shines above on a cloudy day even in the darkest night time it's just the world that's turned away if you keep your praises climbing you'll find light above the storm don't curse the night it's in god's timing trust endure until the morn. God speaks out of the thick darkness in Deuteronomy 5 and 22. Now, each of these things shows us where God speaks from. And we need to catch this because God desires us to know what his voice does. And often we don't know because we don't ask. We don't recognize what God is doing. So we want to look at this and see what God is up to. In Psalm 29, verses 3 through 9, Psalm 29, 3 through 9, we find these principles. The voice of God speaks upon the waters, 
and the God of glory or God in releasing his glory thunders now we're going to look at this a little more extensively later on the the thunders of God because they are speakings of the voice of God that we have missed or not been aware of in Job 26 14 the thunder shows his power and the voice of God shows his power in Psalm 81 verse 7 thunder releases the secrets of God in Isaiah 29 and 6 he visits us by his voice each time God speaks and you recognize it it is actually it is actually God visiting you I wonder how often we've missed the visitation of God in Revelation 14 2 the thundering voice is also the voice of his corporate body and we're going to hear more and more of that as we come to the end of days in 1st Samuel 2 and 10 thunder releases the judgments of God and we find that the voice of God is powerful or full of power that we see from creation the voice of God divides the flames of fire The voice of God, this again from Psalm 29, 3 through 9, the voice of God makes the hinds to calve. In other words, brings forth brand new life. And the voice of God discovers our forests or discovers the forest. Now I want to come here and I want us to look at this because this is bringing forth that principle and we're going to close this lesson with this today. Bringing forth the principle that no one heard a personal word. They were all led by the leader who heard from God until they got to Sinai. One of the things this speaks of, if we're right about that being the day of Pentecost, is that when we receive our Pentecostal experience now I'm not talking necessarily about the gift of tongues I am talking about what Pentecost speaks of if we looked honestly at the type and shadow everything that happened at Mount Sinai is a type of our Pentecost but when we begin to come into our Pentecost we hear first of all the voice of God so maybe sometime later I'll take some time and teach on uh, true Pentecost. Uh, our Pentecostal brethren have minimized the experience of Pentecost and they've reduced it to the gift of tongues. I believe in the gift of tongues, I speak in tongues, but it is just a gift and Pentecost is much more than the gift of tongues okay now here are the parallels between Israel and our experience in the beginning Israel in Egypt applied the blood and the blood gave them salvation from the destroyer he said when I see the blood I will pass over to you that's the equivalent of our salvation experience it says that they went through the Red Sea and the New Testament tells us they were baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. That was at the same time actually because the cloud came at the sea. God caused the cloud to stand between them and the Egyptians and they were baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. They experienced the cloud, the baptism of the Spirit. And there was a measure of worship because Miriam, uh, the song of Moses and the, and the song of Miriam uh, was a song of worship. And when they sang that song, there was the dance. The first worship service we have in the scripture is a dancing service. Hmm. Well, we're not going to go into that extensively. We're just going to leave it there. And in our experiences praise and worship and 
first of all, public worship, or the first public worship. Number five, divine water supply. The washing is equivalent in our life to the washing of water by the word. And we could actually parallel each of these things in the tabernacle as well, but we're not going to take time to do that. They camped at Elam, the beginning of divine government. God begins to bring order into our life because that's where the 70 elders were appointed. Okay? And then you have Mount Sinai, the first day of the third month, the first day of the Feast of Pentecost. That is when every one of them heard God for themselves. That's when they made the choice. Moses, you go talk to God. We don't want to be destroyed by his voice. And that is when there came someone to step between my individual relationship with God and God himself. That's where priesthood came from. A whole tribe was chosen to be priesthood because the individual refused an individual relationship. Just think of that for a while. Oops. Now we're going to end this lesson here and <clears throat> we have there our contact information. And I just want to say this, although you can write me by snail mail, uh, I would appreciate if you have questions that you do it through the email address that is there. That way I can write back, but I can also do it in such a way that I can fill in your, uh, write in between your questions and write after your questions the answer. I find that sometimes when someone calls me and tells me something, I don't remember everything they said. I don't remember every portion of the question they ask. And I believe it's important that your questions be answered. Uh, Jesus took time in his ministry to answer questions. Not foolish questions, but those that were honest questions he asked. And so you also have there our website, uh, Dr. William J. Hurst minute uh, dot com uh, there you can go there and find uh, courses written in academic style uh, that would be available to you whether you want them just to read for the information or whether you desire to take them as credit courses through our school uh, that is also available and then uh, there's also a place there to donate there are CDs there and DVDs and if you desire to keep uh, this ministry coming and these lessons coming, please go there. Ask the Lord what you can do to help us continue. Uh, this is Dr. William J. Hurst teaching all nations the practical word of God and mentoring students one student at a time.